Welcome back to lecture number 12 and the final one in our study of part one of Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan. And we come to uh, what is uh, one of the most wonderful descriptions of uh, death and passing through the river and, and into the gates of the celestial city. Uh, we were in the delectable mountains in our previous uh, study, and you remember uh, among other things, Christian and Hopeful were uh, taken to uh, a mountain a ridge called Clear, and then with the aid of a perspective glass, a telescope if you will, uh, they could see Beulah land and beyond it they could see something like the gates of the city uh, and uh, some of the glory of the place. So they've been given a little anticipation uh, of heaven. Actually, in the allegory, that I think was something that uh, Christians see on the Lord's Day and in the ministry of the Word. I think that's what Bunyan was trying to say. Now, before they get to uh, the glory of uh, the celestial city, uh, Hopeful and Christian pass through a place called Enchanted Ground. Uh, this is a place uh, where they are not allowed to fall asleep. If they fall asleep, Terrible things are going to happen to them, so they must stay awake. And uh, there's a description of just how close they get to falling asleep. But once again, it's perseverance. Once again, it's the lesson that right up to the end, you can expect opposition and trial and difficulty. They pass through uh, enchanted ground and they come to Beulah land, uh, where the air is very pleasant in contrast to enchanted ground. Uh, and birds sing, and flowers bloom, and the voice uh, of the turtle dove uh, is heard in the land, and the sun is always shining, and the land is full uh, of wonderful things. And most significantly, Beulah land is beyond the reach of villains like giant despair or the monsters that lurk in the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, they're also within sight now of the city where they are going, and uh, they, they uh, greet uh, others there, the inhabitants of the country, uh, and shining ones who walk here because it's right next to the border of heaven. And these are shining ones uh, who will actually, angels, uh, who, will, who will escort them now to uh, the gates of the celestial city. They meet a gardener who tells them that the beautiful vineyards and the gardens are the kings and are planted there for the enjoyment and for the comfort of the pilgrims. They refresh themselves with delicacies, food, once again, Bunyan loved food, and his description of it is, uh, is wonderful in the course of the tale of Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, and uh, they are allowed, finally, to get some sleep. And when they awake, they go straightway to the city, and on their way they meet these two shining ones who accompany them. Christian and Hopeful ask these men to travel with them, and they're willing uh, to go, and they state that their goal must be obtained by their own faith. Uh, they escort them, but it's their own faith that will get them to the celestial city. Uh, Bunyan is again emphasizing uh, justification by faith alone in Christ alone and not through the help of any other intermediary. Uh, they go on until they're within sight of the gate and before them is a river and there's no bridge over it and the river appears to be uh, deep and the pilgrims are astounded and they're told you must go through or you can't arrive at the gate. Pilgrims ask if there's another way but they're told uh, that only two men have entered the city without going through the river, nor shall there be until the last tr trumpet shall sound. Uh, those two men, of course, are Enoch uh, and Elijah, uh, who didn't experience death. The river, of course, is an allegory here, is allegorically a representation of death. Uh, and then these pilgrims, especially Christian, um, begin uh, to despair. Uh, and they ask if the river is always the same depth, and they're told, no, it isn't. Uh, but they're denied any further help in the matter. Christian begins to enter 
uh, into the water and he begins to sink and he cries out to hopeful I'm sinking he says in deep waters the breakers go over my head all the waves go over me quoting from uh, a psalm and uh, hopeful responds uh, be of good cheer my brother I feel the bottom and it is good now hopeful's encouragement doesn't help Christian too much as he's overcome now with a great uh, sense of darkness and horror he's afraid he's going to die uh, in the river and never enter the gate he doesn't seem to remember the events of his pilgrimage and has troublesome uh, thoughts of the sins uh, that he has committed and hopeful uh, holds Christian's head now above the water and with much uh, difficulty tries to comfort him telling him he sees the gate and and there are people there to to welcome us eventually Christian cries out with a loud voice oh I see him again and he tells me when you pass through the waters I will be with you and when you pass through the rivers they will not sweep over you both of them take courage and soon they find a solid ground to stand on the rest of the river is shallow on the other side the two shining ones are already waiting for the pilgrims they admit their role in uh, waiting and uh, where ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation uh, these are angels and a reference uh, there to some of the work of angels in helping us the city stands upon a mighty hill they climb with no difficulty due to the assistance of these uh, two shining ones their mortal garments are left behind uh, in the river and they emerge without them uh, they all talk about the glory uh, of the place uh, that they're going to you are now going to the paradise of God in which you'll see the tree of life and eat of the never fading fruits of it and when you arrive there white robes shall be given you and every day your walk and talk shall be with the king even all the days of eternity you'll not see there again such things as you saw when you were in the lower region upon the earth that is sorrow and sickness and affliction and death for the old order of things has passed away as they draw near the gate a company of the heavenly host come out to greet them the pilgrims are introduced uh, by the two shining ones and the heavenly host cry out blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the lamb and then the king's trumpeters come out and meet them everyone travels together with much shouting and rejoicing and uh, the uh, sound of trumpets they reach the gate above the gates are written blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city shining ones now look down from above Enoch and Moses and Elijah and others are there and the pilgrims present their certificates yes hopeful has one too and the certificates are taken to the king who orders that the gates be opened that the righteous may enter in they go and as they enter they are transfigured and given new robes to wear they break out into praise singing uh, with a loud voice to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever it's a wonderful description and uh, um, it, it would take a heart of stone I think not to be moved by Bunyan's uh, powerful imagination and his uh, powerful description of death passing through the river and eventually entering, entering into the gates of the city and all of it circumscribed by uh, Bunyan's understanding of justification and, and double imputation uh, that the old garments are, are taken away and uh, white garments now the garments of Christ uh, are given now ours is an age uh, that doesn't think about death uh, the way the 17th century thought uh, about death 17th century uh, was sur surrounded by death um, 
children, for example, the death of children in the 17th century. Um, the majority of children died in childbirth. Uh, John Owen, for example, uh, had 11 children, 10 of them died in infancy. And the one that survived died uh, in her mid-twenties uh, or so. So Pilgrim's Progress uh, is, a, is a tract uh, to help Christians uh, understand the reality of death and to be able to face it with uh, assurance, uh, with expectation, with hope, uh, with confidence, uh, that although, although we may fear the process of dying, we have no need to be afraid of death itself because Christ has conquered death by His resurrection from uh, the dead. We are in union with one who is alive. We are in union with the resurrected Christ. So in one sense, we have died in Christ and we are alive in Christ uh, already. So the uh, whole point of Pilgrim's Progress and, and much of the literature of the 17th century, the sermons of Puritans, uh, like John Bunyan, uh, was designed to bring uh, confidence and assurance for those who believe and trust in the gospel, for those who trust in Christ alone for salvation, that death holds no fear. fear. Uh, Christ has conquered the grave and death and hell uh, and Satan uh, himself. But there is a struggle in death, and it's uh, fascinating here that Christian uh, experienced the process of death in the allegory of crossing the river. Uh, he experienced it with a far uh, greater sense of struggle than Hopeful did. Uh, the question that was asked, is the river uh, as deep in every, in every place? And the answer was, was no. Uh, and actually, the river was as deep as was your faith. Uh, and uh, Bunyan is saying, for those who had weak faith, the river is very deep. And for those who have strong faith, uh, like Hopeful, he, he says he could touch the bottom as he, as he waded through the river. His feet could touch the bottom. Uh, and and uh, Bunyan is saying here, uh, he's being a pastor, of course. Uh, he's saying uh, that uh, not everyone experiences uh, the Christian life in the same way. Not everyone experiences trials and tribulations in the same way. And not everyone experiences uh, the process of dying in the same way. And for some, even strong believers like, uh, like Christian, uh, there are trials and temptations and assaults, perhaps, of the evil one and experiences of the weakness of faith that, that come and assault you at the time of death. Some of us have known uh, perhaps a loved one. I think of a fellow minister who I loved and respected, adored uh, indeed. He was a, just a godly, godly man. But in the hour of his death, faith seemed to have escaped him. And there was a, there was a moment, uh, an hour or two, when he seemed to have completely lost his assurance. And then just before the end, it all came back again. And that smile of reassurance, I remember as I read to him uh, the 23rd Psalm, and he began to repeat it with me, and, and all that trial seemed to disappear. And I, I, I think it was an assault of Satan uh, in the weakness of his body and, and the weakness of his mind at that time, uh, that Satan had one last attempt uh, at him. Uh, but faith did triumph in the end. So, uh, a struggle. Uh, and I think Bunyan is saying here, as we read this passage, um, we need to prepare ourselves. We need to think uh, about death. And we need to prepare ourselves for uh, for uh, dying. You know, not everyone, uh, not every Christian dies like Mr. Valiant for truth. We haven't met Mr. Valiant for truth. We are about to meet him as we study together part two of Pilgrim's uh, Progress. Uh, we've had faithful and hopeful in part one, and in part two you have this uh, wonderful character, Mr. Valiant for truth. Uh, this is the description uh, we're given uh, of his passing. 
After this, it was noised abroad that Mr. Valiant for Truth was taken with a summons by the same post as the other, and had this for a token that the summons was true, that his pitcher was broken at the fountain. When he understood it, he called for his friends and told them of it. They said, uh, then said he, I am going to my father's, and though with great difficulty I am got hither, yet now I do not repent me of all the trouble I have been at to arrive where I am. My sword I give to him that shall succeed me in my pilgrimage, my courage and skill to him that can get it, my marks and scars I carry with me to be a witness for me that I have fought the battles who now will be my rewarder. When the day that he must go hence was come, many accompanied him to the riverside, into which as he went, he said, Death, where is thy sting? And as he went down deeper, he said, Grave, where is thy victory? So he passed over, and all the trumpets sounded for him on the other side. Now, that's a very different description uh, of death. Uh, Mr. Valiant, for truth, uh, citing those words from 1 Corinthians uh, 15, death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? Seems full of assurance and uh, confidence. Christian, on the other hand, uh, was not. Now, it makes us ask the question, why did Bunyan have his principal character, Christian, who for all intents and purposes is Bunyan himself, I think, it's an almost autobiographical part one, why did he have Christian uh, sort of falter at the end? What a wonderful thing to put in the book. That uh, Imagine if Christian had been Mr. Valiant for Truth. Uh, and imagine that he hadn't written part two, and all you had was part one of Pilgrim's Progress. And therefore, Bunyan is saying, this is the stereotypical Christian death. It's one of absolute triumph and confidence, and there's no trial, and there's no difficulty. And Bunyan realized that's, that's not how some Christians die. Even the best of Christians uh, have moments of uh, struggle. And, and I think it's beautiful that Bunyan would have his own principal character, Christian, falter a little at the end. What, uh, what uh, confidence that gives us, what hope that gives us, what, uh, what encouragement that gives us, uh, that uh, God brings home even those who falter uh, at the end, that it's all of grace uh, from beginning to end. It's not great faith that saves. It is faith in Christ that saves, and that faith may be weak faith, and it may be faltering faith. And I, I, I find that uh, incredibly uh, pastoral, I think, uh, as I read through uh, Pilgrim's Progress. But there's something else. There's a, there's a preparation for death. Uh, yes, Bunyan intends you to think about it. Uh, not, not to put it away, not to put it aside, not never to think about it, but to bring it to the forefront of your mind. Am I ready to die? There's a wonderful uh, uh, illustration uh, in the 17th century. Thomas Goodwin, uh, the Puritan, uh, who was uh, the president of Magdalen College uh, in Oxford, uh, and he has a study. It's very dark, tiny little window. It's a dark day. It's England, after all. It's cloudy and probably raining. Uh, and a student, a prospective student, and you have to remember that in the 17th century, prospective students to Oxford would probably have been 12 or 13 years old. Uh, so this young boy has traveled uh, to Oxford. He's being interviewed by the great Thomas uh, Goodwin, uh, the president of Magdalen College. He enters into this dark room, and from behind a desk, he hears these words, are you ready to die? And he flees in terror. Uh, thinking that his life is about to be ended. And, uh, of course, Thomas Goodwin was doing what Puritan pastors often did. Are you, are you ready to meet Jesus? Are you, are you converted? Are you saved? Are you in a right relationship with uh, Christ? Are you regenerate? Have you tasted of the good things of the, of the world to come? Uh, but that was the kind of question uh, that Puritan pastors uh, often asked. Bunyan, in another uh, one of his writings, uh, puts it like this, Consider thou must die but once, I mean as to this world. For if 
Thou, when thou goest hence, dost not die well. Thou canst not come back and die better. Isn't that an interesting thing? Uh, Bunyan is saying, uh, you know, we only have one attempt at death and uh, we, need, we need to die well because we can't come back and do it all over again. We can't uh, press the re-record button uh, and uh, have another go at it. Uh, which for Bunyan meant, um, you know, age expectancy in the 17th century. Uh, very few people made it past 25 or 30 years of age. Uh, most of the Puritan preachers died in their, in their 50s or early 60s. Very few of them made it uh, into what we now regard as uh, pensionable uh, age. Uh, so they're exhorting uh, one another as Christians to die um, well. Uh, and uh, I remember reading uh, in the biography of Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, for example, how as a doctor uh, facing cancer, how uh, that was one of his great concerns. Uh, he talks about it with, uh, with great sincerity and earnestness, uh, that he wanted to die uh, well. But then something quite unexpected happens right at the end of book one of uh, Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, they're gazing upon these things, and uh, I turned my head to look back. This is uh, Christian and hopeful now from within the city. And they looked back and they saw ignorance coming up to the riverside. But as soon as he got over, and that without half the difficulty uh, the other two men met with, for it happened that there was then in that place one vain hope, a ferryman, that with his boat helped him over. So he as the other I saw, did ascend the hill to come up to the gate, only he came alone. Neither did any man meet him with the least encouragement. When he was come up to the gate, he looked up to the writing that was above and then began to knock, supposing that entrance should have been given to him. But he was asked by the men that looked over the top of the gate, Whence come thou, and what would you have? He answered, I have ate and drank in the presence of the king, and he has taught in our streets. Then they asked him for his certificate, that they might go in and show it to the king. So he fumbled in his bosom for one and found none. Then said they, Have you none? But the man answered never a word. So they told the king, but he would not come down and see him, but commanded the two shining ones that conducted Christian and hopeful to the city to go out and take ignorance and bind him hand and foot, and have him away. Then they took him up and carried him through the air to the door that I saw in the side of the hill and put him in there. Then I saw that there was a way to hell, even from the gates of heaven, as well as from the city of destruction. So I awoke, and behold, it was a dream." I doubt you were expecting that right at the end of Pilgrim's Progress. There it is again, that, that warning. If you come all the way up to the gates without your certificate, you will not enter in. 